For a lot of wrestlers, getting to put on cool costumes and become a professional wrestler at the world's biggest promotion was a long-time dream. But what do you do when these dreams don't turn out as expected? The answer for some of these wrestlers is to wrap up their time in the ring and go for an entirely different career path. Wrestlers like who? Stick around to find out as we take you through the list of WWE wrestlers who gave up everything for a new career. Quick heads up before we get into our list. We all know there are tons and tons of wrestlers who have had kind of similar jobs in the entertainment industry. Hell, some even do these jobs while still working in the WWE. The likes of The Rock, Batista, and more recently John Cena have completely exploded the Hollywood movie scene, which is pretty cool. There are also the likes of Brock Lesnar who left the WWE for the UFC, not straight-up entertainment wrestling, but it has the same vibe as you know. Point is, as cool as all that is, this video isn't about those kinds of guys. Nah. Today, we'll be showing you wrestlers who completely left the WWE for the most regular of jobs and never looked back. So prepared to be shocked as we reveal the stuff some of your favorite cult superstars now earn a living from. With that fair warning in mind, we'll be starting off with Sean Stasiak, who left the WWE to become a chiropractor. To get the full idea of how crazy that transition is, we have to take you back, decades before Sean joined the WWE. You might not be familiar with the Stasiak name, but back in the 1970s, there was a WWF champion named Stan Stasiak. Yup, that's Sean's father. Stan was one of the big names during that era of the company, meaning our guy, Sean, grew up in and around the wrestling industry. In fact, when he was only a kid, he had met some of the industry's most legendary dudes like Andre the Giant and Jesse the Body Ventura. It wasn't much of a surprise then when he pursued a career in wrestling, debuting in the WWE in 1999. However, Sean was never able to get nearly as successful as his dad. Instead, his meat character was made a boy toy for the Pretty Mean Sisters trio, which consisted of Terry Runnels, Jacqueline, and Ryan Shamrock. Less than a couple of years later, he was released from the company, after which he got picked up by the WCW. After Vince McMahon took over the WCW and merged it with the WWE, Sean was again let back in, but didn't have more than a one-year spell before getting released again. He went on to work in minor promotions before finally retiring from pro wrestling, having won just the WCW World Tag Team Championship and a WWE Hardcore Championship title at different times in his career. Although he made a couple of cameo appearances under the independent circuit between 2007 and 2010, Stasiak became a chiropractor almost immediately after retiring. That's something no one could have predicted during his days at the world's premier wrestling promotion, but that's not the only surprise. Growing up in Oakville, Ontario, near Toronto, Sean was well-educated, attending White Oak Secondary School before enrolling at and graduating from Boise State University. Here's the thing, though. Sean never graduated with a degree in chiropractics or anything similar. In fact, the degree he obtained at Boise State was a Bachelor of Arts in Communications. That's right. Unlikely as it seems, though, this man now works for the Advanced Comprehensive Medical Team based out of Texas. He even received a certificate in manipulation under anesthesia from the Academy of Physical and Manual Medicine in New York back in 2007. And oh, we should probably add that when he isn't straightening people's backs, Sean Stasiak is a motivational speaker. Dude really does keep busy. Since we're on the topic of WWE wrestlers who put aside the costumes for something in the medical world, we've got to mention former superstar diva Dawn Marie. Looking at it now, it shouldn't surprise us too much that Dawn Marie found a career totally different from wrestling. But back when she was in the WWE, playing the role of Vince McMahon's on-screen legal assistant, no one would have imagined this lady doing some regular job. As a child, Dawn was one of those kids who always wanted to learn at every opportunity. Her father, who raised her, was a zoologist, so she grew up spending a lot of time outdoors, camping or hunting. She was always a fan of wrestling, but her education came first, so she attended the Stern School of Business at New York University, graduating at the age of 22. Next, Dawn Marie began working for a real estate consultancy firm in Manhattan, New York, and even got as far as the position of Director of International Real Estate. Pretty cool, yeah? But here's the thing. She didn't leave the WWE to become a real estate agent. Not even close. In fact, before she got into the WWE, Dawn had switched careers, pursuing entertainment and acting as a profession. She had the goal of becoming either a model or a professional actress, 
so she resigned from her real estate firm and chased her newfound dream. While working as a model, however, Dawn met talent agent and professional wrestling promoter Jonathan Gold and jokingly suggested she'd like to pursue a career in wrestling. One thing led to another, and Dawn Marie was signed to the ECW as a wrestler in 1998. During this time, she continued taking acting classes, hoping to continue her dream when her career in professional wrestling was over. And then came the WWE. Although her time in the company was short-lived, Dawn Marie Saltis did more than enough to be remembered as a WWE diva. She joined the company and debuted in 2002 as Vince McMahon's on-screen legal assistant. Over time, her character evolved into one of the best heels in the women's division during the ruthless aggression era. She feuded with the likes of Miss Jackie and Michelle McCool, but her most iconic feud was with Tori Wilson, a feud that yielded one of the most controversial kisses in the company's history. You might want to check our video on the most unexpected kisses in WWE history for more on that. Anywho, while still at her peak, Dawn Marie became pregnant in 2005 and was released from the WWE soon enough. Oh yeah, that's really shady and shameful stuff from the Stanford-based promotion. Dawn would later file a complaint against her former employer, claiming that her contract had been wrongfully terminated as a result of her pregnancy. Her lawsuit also stated that she had suffered mental duress as a result of the release. While the details were never fully uncovered, the case was reportedly settled out of court late in 2007. If you followed Dawn Marie's story well, it sounds like Dawn finally got her chance to go into acting like she always wanted, right? Well, she didn't. Instead, she went on to acquire other medical board qualifications and became a nurse in a hospital in her hometown of New Jersey. That's right. After all those career changes, Dawn Marie is now a nurse. We bet that's a twist you didn't see coming, and we have a lot more shockers like this. Take this next wrestler, Mohammed Hassan, for example. If you know this dude, you're a real one. First, Mark Julian Kopani is his real name and solely based on physique, this dude is up there with the most aesthetically pleasing dudes. After starting off his wrestling career in 2002 under the Louisville, Kentucky-based promotion Ohio Valley Wrestling and recording some success, the WWE scooped him up in late 2004, and from his arrival, it was clear this dude had insane potential. In just his first couple of months at the company, Kopani defeated the likes of The Hurricane, Sergeant Slaughter, Chris Benoit, and Chris Jericho. He immediately accumulated so much heat from the heroes in the company that they all legitimately ganged up to absolutely batter him at the Royal Rumble. But that didn't stop him. All under six months, he fought against all of the company's biggest superstars. We're talking about the likes of Hulk Hogan, Shawn Michaels, Batista, and John Cena. He also iconically beat Big Show, in his first SmackDown win, dude was really unstoppable. The thing that would eventually stop him from being his gimmick, Mohammed Hassan. Despite being American and of Italian descent, Kopani was given the character of an Arab American who had set out to rebuild the reputation of Middle Easterners in America following the 9-11 attacks. You can probably already tell the WWE was playing with fire, making such a gimmick. It worked well for some months until a segment in which Hassan summoned five masked henchmen dressed in black shirts, ski masks, and camo pants to help him defeat The Undertaker. They did get the upper hand over the dead man, but three days later, the 2005 London bombings took place. A number of news outlets had it that the culprits of the bombings were dressed in a way like Hassan's five henchmen. Yeah, yeah, it all sounds fuzzy, but this whole episode developed into one of the most controversial moments in WWE history. Eventually, television authorities and legislation led to Muhammad Hassan's character being completely kicked out of the main roster back to developmental territories. Soon after, Kopani was released from the company leading him to retire altogether from wrestling. Sure, there was a lot of fan backlash as his character was becoming a fan favorite, but this case had even Vince McMahon's hands tied. Prior to his three-year wrestling career, Kopani had been studying for a degree in history at the State University of New York at Buffalo. He dropped out to pursue wrestling, but it appears he must have returned to complete that degree later on. Why? That's because a few years later, Kopani became employed as a world history teacher at Hannibal High School in Hannibal, New York. Some years later, he was made assistant principal at G. Ray Bodley High School in Fulton, New York, 
and has since been promoted to the position of principal of Fulton Junior High School. Now that's a story we couldn't even predict. He has also written and released a graphic novel with Shad Gaspard of Crime Time, Assassin and Son, which has won several awards for Best Original Independent Graphic Novel. Way to go, Muhammad Hassan. Moving on, we have another wrestler who gave up everything from a different career, his name, Spike Dudley. Remember him? If you don't, then you at least remember the Dudley boys. The iconic tag team made up of Bubba Ray Dudley, Devon Dudley, Stacy Keebler, and D. Spike Dudley, of course. This group used to be the outright best tag team in the WWE back in the early 2000s. Spike became a part of the team in the 90s when they all worked with the ECW until 1999, when the entire team migrated to the WWE everyone except Spike. He stayed there partnering with other wrestlers to win tag team titles until the ECW declared bankruptcy. It was during this period in 2001 that Spike joined the WWE and reconciled with his partners and kayfabe brothers. From then on, the group became completely unstoppable. Spike won the WWF Tag Team Championship with Taz, won the European Championship once, and Hardcore Championship eight freaking times in 2002. As a single act, Spike also won the Cruiserweight Championship before being released from his WWE contract. Despite still being at a reasonable age to get back in the ring actively, Spike first spent time working as a trainer on the independent circuit before eventually joining TNA and dropping the Dudley name. Two years later, he was released, this time from the TNA, and he returned to the independent circuit where he spent the next three years competing. Eventually, in 2010, Spike Doodley stopped training and performing on a full-time basis. You might have heard of one of two surprise performances from him between 2010 and 2015, but other than these, Spike was really done. But bills had to be paid, so he got a regular job working as a financial planner. That's right, not the exact job you'd expect an athlete to take up, but Spike had his reasons, as he explained in an interview. A lot of the guys have gone through what I've gone through. You're on top of the world, making decent money, and then, when that money stops, what do you do? You hear stories all the time of athletes that made millions being broke. I want to become an educator, to show people there are ways to plan for the future. And that's exactly what he's been ever since. Given the number of hard knocks this man took during his career, we actually can understand his decision to step out of the ring and just live the easy life. Sure, finances have its ups and downs, but at least it won't leave good old Spike Doodley bleeding. Up next, we have one former WWE diva that the streets won't forget, AJ Lee, April. Jeanette Mendez might not have been the most skillful or the most enticing of female wrestlers, but in the time she spent in the WWE between 2009 and 2015, AJ Lee definitely did enough to be remembered. Although she developed an interest in wrestling as a teenager, Thanks to inspiration from Lita, AJ never had a professional career as a wrestler at the front of her plans. Instead, she enrolled at the New York University's Tisch School of the Arts after high school and majored in film and television production. Sadly, her family's financial troubles caused her to drop out just months into the program. This was when AJ put her focus on having a wrestling career, and by 2007, she made her pro debut in New Jersey's independent circuit. Fast forward to 2009, AJ Lee got signed to the WWE, and although it took three years for her to get on the main roster, once she was there, AJ became one of the more famous women in the company at the time. She was in an on-screen relationship with Daniel Bryan for a while, had a scandal with John Cena, and was in a long love-hate relationship with her tag team partner Caitlyn. In the next three years, she'd become the winner of the Divas Championship a record-tying three times, holding the title for an overall record of 406 days. She was also named Sammy Award Diva of the Year twice in 2012 and 2014, as well as being voted Woman of the Year every year from 2012 to 2014 by the readers of Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Not bad, not bad at all. If you ask us, what stood AJ Lee out from other divas was her unique character, a mentally unstable gimmick labeled the crazy chick. And guess what? For her, it wasn't just a gimmick. Lee had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder earlier in her life. And while she kept her condition hidden from her employers at the time, she has spoken about how playing the crazy lady role helped her hide her condition in plain sight. After just three years in the limelight, 
Mendez announced she was retiring from professional wrestling in 2015, and she hasn't looked back since then. She has since become a writer, one of her best works being a book titled Crazy Is My Superpower, in which she talked about her background and her days in the pro wrestling industry. This memoir was published by Crown Archetype in April 2017, and it debuted at number 10 on the New York Times bestseller list for hardcover nonfiction. Talking about the book, A.J. Lee once said, Basically, I felt this book was the journey to discovering mental illness, and then saying, Oh, this okay, I can use this as a weapon, and it's actually a gift. It helps me see the world in different colors, and that's a good thing. Since then, she has worked on a number of other successful pieces through her partnership with actress Amy Garcia. Mendez has also written a couple of comic book series, including Glow vs. The Babyface and Wait For It, a story in the first issue of DC Comics' Wonder Woman, Black and Gold, a miniseries celebrating Wonder Woman's 80th anniversary. And that's not all. She also writes for the production company she founded alongside Amy Garcia and has written a four-issue limited Dungeons & Dragons series and the screenplay for the 2022 Netflix film Blade of the 47 Ronin. Lastly, Mendez now works as an advocate for mental health awareness and animal welfare and has been recognized by the National Alliance on Mental Illness for her work. Fair to say she has found even more success outside of the ring than in it. But if she ever does want to get back in the ring, it should be an easy thing since AJ Lee has been married to CM Punk for about a decade now. As we approach the end of our list, we have former Scotty 2 Hottie, who, ironically, is now a firefighter. Scotty used to be in the WWE for almost two decades, joining the company in 1991 and leaving in 2007. During this time, he held the WWF World Tag Team Championship, the Tag Team Championship, and the company's Light Heavyweight Championship. Earlier in his career, he had some pretty iconic matchups, like when he defeated Eddie Guerrero, Perry Saturn, and Dean Malenko at WrestleMania 200, or when he faced off against Edge and Christian to win the World Tag Team Championship. Later on, though, Scotty ended up just having a number of runs as a tag team partner to a host of B-list wrestlers before eventually getting released in 2007. In the years that followed, he had some surprise appearances, like when he showed up to defeat Heath Slater on an episode of NXT and when he teamed up with Sexay to challenge the Ascension for the NXT Tag Team Championship. But in 2013, Scott Garland made the shocking move to hang up the costume and become a firefighter. Seemed like Scotty Too Hottie found the ring too hot and decided to start putting out fires instead. He enrolled for training as an emergency medical technician, graduating from Lake Tech Fire Academy in Florida after his training. As soon as he had completed his training, Garland became an active firefighter and EMT in the same city. Unlike the other names on this list, though, Scotty has struggled with really leaving the ring behind. He returned to the WWE in 2016, working as a trainer at the Performance Center till 2021 before he moved to the independent circuit, still as a trainer. But once a firefighter, always a firefighter. Lastly, at the end of our list of WWE wrestlers who gave up everything for another career, we have Midian. WCW fans knew him as Tex Slazinger, while WWE fans know him as either Midian or Phineas Y. Godwin, but today, this man works under his government name of Dennis Knight as a chef. That's right, this former WWE superstar is now a chef, but this wasn't always the case. In fact, like most other names on this list, he had a number of career paths before this. Knight had been a college football player hoping to go pro from Salem University in West Virginia, but he got a career-ending shoulder injury. After this, the young dude tried out a career as a bouncer, working in Florida. It was during this time he met Steve Kiern, who would eventually train him as a professional wrestler. Knight made his pro debut in 1989 in a match that coincidentally pitted him against his real-life stepfather, Ron Slinker. HR spent the next few years in the independent circuit before getting signed to the USWA and eventually the WCW in 1992. To be frank, his career didn't really take off during his two years in the WCW, and the same could be said for his second spell in the USWA between 1995 and 1996, as he only won the promotion's Southern title on two occasions. Eventually, in 1996, he was signed to the WWE, and this is where things really began to take off for this dude. Fighting under the Phineas One, Godwin Gimmick K, Knight was portrayed as a cousin to Canterbury, and together, 
they formed the duo called the Godwins. After debuting in January 1996, the duo defeated the Body Donnas to win the Tag Team Championship at a live event in Madison Square Garden just months later. Upon Canterbury getting terribly injured and forced to retire from pro wrestling, Knight was without a partner in 1998 before getting kidnapped by the Acolytes and brainwashed into joining the Ministry of Darkness. It was in this storyline he took up the Midian name and worked closely with The Undertaker, Kane and Viscera, in feuds with the likes of Stone Cold Steve Austin. He also won the WWE European Championship in 1999, but his character never really got to the heights the WWE needed it to be, and eventually he was released in 2001. Midian then spent time training young students at Steve Kearns Pro Wrestling School in his hometown of Tampa, Florida. He did this while still wrestling in a number of independent promotions in Florida and across Europe, and working in the NWA. He'd also made a number of cameo appearances in the WWE not long after his release, before announcing his retirement from professional wrestling altogether in 2006. While Dennis Knight still made several appearances for Great Lakes Championship Wrestling in 2011 and 2012, he has only returned to Vince McMahon's company once, which was to take part in The Undertaker's retirement ceremony at Survivor Series in November 2020. So how did this dude end up being a chef? Well, according to the man himself, he found the fanciest restaurant in Clearwater and just spoke with the chef, expressing his love for cooking. Midian added, He really liked me and took me under his wing and taught me all this super fancy stuff, which is kind of my trademark. I like the presentation and using fancy ingredients. If you want to have a fancy dinner at your house for you and your wife on your anniversary, I'll come over and cook a four or five course meal. Not bad, not bad at all. In fact, since receiving his training, Knight has now started his own catering company and has appeared on a YouTube cooking show displaying his culinary skills. Good for him. Which of these job changes surprise you the most? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. And before you leave, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Ring Rivals so you don't miss the next ones.